Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the CARES ESSER LEA Annual Reporting Requirements Webinar. My name is Erin Given, and I'm OSSI's CARES ESSER Grant Manager. A few housekeeping notes before we get started. This webinar will be recorded and we'll post it to the OSSI CARES website after the presentation along with the slide deck. I've added the slide deck and two other documents we'll discuss to the meeting handout. As you come into the webinar, you're automatically placed on mute to cut out, out on um, background noise. Since everyone's on mute, in your control panel, you'll see a question box. And if you have questions throughout the presentation, you can type the questions into the question box. I'll stop periodically to answer questions as we go. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll also have time for questions. And give me one moment for a technical. Um, So the purpose of this webinar is to review federal reporting requirements of the CARES ESSER grant. Um, we'll go over the background of the reporting, due dates, and walk through the submission form. So let's dive into some of the background of the reporting requirements. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act, was signed into law on March 27, 2020. It provides funding to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus or COVID-19 public health emergency. Then within the CARES Act is the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Fund, or ESSER. Um, and CARES ESSER includes funding formula to provide LEAs with emergency relief funds to address the impact COVID-19 has had and continues to have on elementary and secondary schools. The CARES Act requires um, LEAs that received ESSER funds to report specific information regarding expenditures. To fulfill the federal reporting requirement, LEAs that receive the CARES ESSER allocation are required to submit annual reporting data to OSSI. Today, we'll be specifically discussing the fiscal year 2020 annual report for the time period running from March 13th, 2020 to September 30th, 2020. And note that uh, some LEAs received a CARES ESSER allocation, but they did not incur expenditures during fiscal year 2020. These LEAs still need to complete the reporting, but only one section of the form is required. And we'll look at this in more detail shortly. OSSI then will submit data for each LEA to the U.S. Department of Education. The information that we submit will be used, um, it will be reviewed by employees at the U.S. Department of Education to ensure ESSER funds are used in accordance with the CARES Act. And the information will also be shared with the public to promote transparency around the use and the effectiveness of emergency funding. The U.S. Department of Education recently announced the Educational Stabilization Funds Transparency Portal website, or the ESF Transparency Portal website, and it will be used to collect and disseminate information about education programs within the CARES Act, including CARES ESSER. The ESF Transparency Portal will make funding data accessible to the general public. So as an LEA, you should be prepared that all the information included in your annual report uh, will be provided and accessible to the public. And then before we get into the details of the reporting requirements, I want to note that U.S. Ed has not yet finalized the reporting requirements. The forms and guidance we're sharing today are based on the ESSER collection questions draft that was released by U.S. Ed this fall. Changes are possible, but they're likely to be minimal. Um, and we anticipate that the final reporting requirements will be announced from Ed the first week of January. Once requirements are finalized, um, OSU will let LEAs know if additional information needs to be gathered. So here are the tentative annual reporting deadlines. We don't expect um, the deadlines to be changed by U.S. Department of Education as they finalize their requirements. So please be prepared to submit the first LEA annual report to OSU by January 13th, um, 2021. The first annual report corresponds to fiscal year 2020 or um, FY20 in EGMS, and it will require data inputs for the period running from March 13, 2020 to September 30, 2020. LEA annual reports will also later be required for fiscal years 21 and 22. 
LEAs will be required to complete the first LEA CARES Officer annual report form and return to ossie.cares at dc.gov. I've attached the form to this presentation and we'll also email the forms out later this week. Here's an overview of the components required in the report. Part one uh, is LEA expenditures during the reporting period that are broken out by specific use of fund categories. If your LEA did not spend during FY20, you don't need to complete this section. The next section, part two, is purchasing educational technology, and it asks specific questions on devices and internet. If your LEA spent funding on purchasing educational technology, you'll be required to answer questions on the number of devices purchased and what type of internet services were purchased. Part three um, is student participation and engagement. And this section is required for LEAs that use FY20 CARES Usher funds to develop, initiate, or implement remote learning. We'll discuss more on this in a few minutes, but most LEAs will be required to complete this section. And then finally, part four, full-time equivalent or FTE positions. This is required for all LEAs that receive the CARES Usher allocation, including LEAs without FY20 spending. So let's take a look at the first part of the form in more detail. Um, for this section, LEAs will need to categorize their FY20 expenditures based on specific use of fund categories and give the total amount expended for each category. The use of fund categories um, are the following here, and I just want to note that um, right now these are the full definitions that we have um, at this time for each of the categories. So we have purchasing educational technology, including hardware, software, and connectivity, may include assistive technology or adaptive equipment, unique needs of special populations, activities focused specifically to addressing the unique needs of low-income children or students, children with disabilities, English learners, racial and ethnic minorities, students experiencing homelessness and foster care youth, providing mental health services and supports, sanit sanitation and minimizing the spread of infectious diseases, including cleaning supplies and staff training, summer learning and supplemental after school programs, and then other uses of funds not included in the above. Um, note that some expenditures may have more than one appropriate use of fund category. In this case, the US Department of Education wants us to prioritize categories in the order they're listed in this chart. So for example, you might have purchased laptops for low-income students to use during summer school. Um, this for that purchase, um, purchasing educational technology, unique needs of special populations, and summer learning and supplemental after school programs would all be appropriate categories. But because purchasing educational technology comes first, that's where you would list that expense. And since there's a very short turnaround period for this reporting requirement, OSI is compiling reports organizing LEA's FY20 CARES, ESSER, EGMS reimbursements by the required use of fund categories. So every LEA with an FY20 CARES, ESSER expenditure will get a report that looks like the below. Um, this sample report is also included in the presentation documents um, in the handouts if you want to take a look. It's called FY20 CARES, ESSER expenditures by annual reporting category underscore example LEA. Um, we use CARES budget codes and EGMS reimbursement request expenditure descriptions to categorize your expenditures um, into the appropriate use of fund categories. So you'll get this report and then you'll need to review and verify that the use of fund categories are correct and appropriate. So you can walk through each line and just check um, that our categorization makes sense. So reimbursement request one, for example, you could look at um, uses the EGMS CARES code, dev, distance learning, which is for devices, laptops, and tablets, 300 Apple iPads. Yes, that makes sense under purchasing educational technology. And you go so on. So like reimbursement request two for salaries and benefits um, of human teacher, uh, human capital teachers. Um, and this is a special education teacher providing targeted support to special education students and parents during virtual learning. So yes, this makes sense under the unique needs of special populations category. 
for the most part, no changes should be re required from our form uh, because the CARES codes and EGMS reimbursement request descriptions are pretty detailed. So then if you agree with our breakdown, you'll select yes in part one of the annual reporting form. There's a question that looks like this. There's a drop down, you'll select yes if you agree, and then that's all you have to do for this section. However, there could be a situation where you think AFI could should have categorized an expenditure more specifically. Um, for example, this would likely be, be with um, expenditures in the other category. Um, let's say the expenditure listed here under other, it's a consultant to develop instructional strategy, strategies for virtual learning and trained staff. Um, let's say that we didn't know based on the EGMS application and reimbursements, but this consultant focused specifically on English language learners, then it really should be included in the um, unique needs of special populations section. So if that was the case in this drop down, you would select no, and then um, you'll need to fill out the amounts on the form for each use of fund category. So you'll see this um, table one on the form and you would need to uh, enter amounts an amount for each use of fund um, category with updates compared to what AFI has sent you. So to recap, if our um, expenditure report by use of fund categories matches your understanding, then there, you, don't, you do not need to fill out this table. If you think that changes are required, please do fill out this table. And I'm gonna pause for a minute in case there's questions. I, um, Yeah, so I see a question from earlier where it asks, is part one LEA expenditures in the reimbursements we submitted to EGMS? Yes. So let me, how do I put this? We did not get the exact requirements for the reporting when we um, created the EGMS application. However, we, there's detailed enough information for us to, as, as I described, like categorize your expenditures. And then, will these reports be sent out to schools with OSI pre-populated data? Yes. So, re so a, a report looking um, a report looking just like this, and you can see a more deep. You can see the um, example. It's just a PDF, kind of expenditure report that looks like this. Will be sent to um, to all LEAs that had EGMS expenditures in FY20, and we'll send those out later this week. Let me go back. I think I wanted to say one more thing here. Um, um, I want to note that anything coded in the other category will require a description in OSSI's submission to U.S. Department of Education. Once Ed finalizes the requirements, I'll have a better idea of how detailed the descriptions need to be. And for now, we're just going to plan to use the CARES, bu um, CARES budget codes and if needed, reimbursement request expenditure description. So let's look um, at the example again. So with this other category, if it appropriately is an other, um, in our data input to Ed, we would say human capital, strategic staffing for recovery learning. And then if we needed to provide further detail, we will take um, information from the expenditure description itself. So that that person, that consultant developed instructional strategies for virtual learning and training staff. Um, and for this, I do want to note um, a lot of the expenditures that fall in the other category are related to salaries and benefits, and we will not include staff names in what we submit because this is publicly available. And I think I got another question. Um, will this report go to our head of schools or will it go to us, the grant managers? It will likely go to, it will go to both. So um, I have a CARES contact list that's kind of a combination of your contacts in your CARES application and um, in your LEA contact list that OSSI has. So it will go to both the um, head of school and to grant managers. And I just want to note that this expenditure report that I, I think I just said this, the uh, um, expenditure report will be sent to LEAs later this week. You'll get a unique one for your LEA. So the next required reporting element is around educational technology. 
any LEA that listed expenditures in part one um, in the purchasing educational technology use of fund category must complete this section in the annual reporting form. So if you don't have any expenditures related to purchasing ex educational technology, you don't have to complete this section. So first, you must answer whether you use CARES ESSER funds to provide home internet access for students. So this is the drop down. you'll select yes or no, and then um, if yes, you need to check boxes for the type of internet services you purchased with CARES ESSER funds. So you, if you had mobile hotspots with paid data plans, you'd select this. Internet connected devices with paid data plans, you'd select it, yes, if, if it's relevant, and so on. Next, you must answer whether you, you use CARES ESSER funds to purchase student devices. For this question, devices refer to laptops, desktops, and tablets. It does not include smartphones. So again, there's um, this question, and you'll do the drop down, yes or no. If you answer yes, then you're going to need to list the number of devices purchased for students in either of the elementary or secondary level. Um, and then you'll also need to include the total number of students enrolled at that level as of September 30th, 2020. And that will give a proportion of students with an LEA provided device purchased with CARES author funds. The next required reporting element is around student participation and engagement in virtual learning. If your LEA used FY20 CARES ESSER funds to develop, initiate, or implement remote learning, you'll need to complete this section. So this definition is more broad than the last section. The last section, it's kind of a binary, either you purchase educational technology or not. This is uh, a little more broad in, in its definition. So I suggest that any LEA that had remote learning and also that used their CARES ESSER expenditures at all related to remote learning complete this section. So a lot of, um, I noticed a lot of purchases are related to remote learning, but also might be used, it might be used when um, students are back in the classroom. In that case, I suggest that you complete this section. So you'll need to check you'll need to check any methods that were used to document student participation and engagement during remote learning. Um, and any method that applies to at least 50% of the grade level should be checked. So we have um, questions for elementary level and secondary level. Um, so I got a question. Um, it says, we use CARES as their funding for school psychologists and social workers. Does part three apply? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that depends on exactly what work they did. If they um, did any virtual engagement, or if they were um, like helping families, families and students manage their virtual learning or the transition from virtual to in the classroom, I think that you should fill out this section. And you can always, um, you can always reach out to me if you're unsure. And the final section of the LEA annual report form is on full-time equivalent or FTE positions. So you'll need to list the number of FTEs for the following time periods, FTE positions as of September 30th, 2018, as of September 30th, 2019, as of March 13th, 2020, and as of September 30th, 2020. This section will need to be completed regardless of whether your LEA had CARES after expenditures in FY20, there are a handful of LEAs I mentioned that um, received the CARES ESSER allocation but did not spend an FY20. Those LEAs still need to complete this section of the form. Um, and the total number of FTE positions should include all staff, regardless of whether the position is funded by federal, state, or local, or other funds. The idea here is that one of the big goals of the CARES Act funding was to preserve jobs, so this information will help federal and other entities understand how CARES Act funded funding impacted employment and jobs. And that's it. Um, as a reminder, you can find the fillable annual reporting form in the um, attached in the handouts here. And later this week, you'll receive an email from me that contains the annual reporting form and also your LEA's 
use the fund category expenditure report. The form should be completed, signed, and emailed to aussie.cares.dc.gov no later than January 13th, 2021. And as soon as, the re as soon as the reporting requirements are finalized by the U.S. Department of Education, OSSI will update reporting forms and request additional information from your LEA if needed. We anticipate that those requirements will be finalized the first week of January. And then if you have any questions throughout the process, please feel free to reach out to me, Erin Given, um, and here's my email and my phone number. And now um, we'll open the floor if there are any other questions. Let me. Okay, I got a question. Do we complete FTE, the FTE section even if we did not include staff positions in our budget? That's a wonderful question. Yes, you still have to complete the section. So the section, the, the FTE section is not related to FTEs funded with CARES. It's related to FTEs overall. And it's really, I think, going to be used to do a trend analysis of how effective the CARES Act was in maintaining FTEs since that was a major goal of the funding. And then just to confirm, we can submit this form once we get the spending report from OSSI. And if there are changes from U.S. Department of Education, you will come back and ask for more. Yes, that's correct. So you can um, complete the form as soon as later this week when you get um, when you get that expenditure report from us. And then if we need more information, we'll come back to you. We really understand that this is a exceptionally busy time for LEAs um, and especially with the holidays. So we're hope we, we will limit any outreach, re-outreach we need to do. So yeah, to, you can complete the form now and then we would reach back out as needed. And I'll give another minute or two in case anybody has any last questions. And it looks like that's it. So if you think of anything else, uh, again, my contact information is here. Uh, let me know. Thanks, everyone.